Let's look at what a confidence interval of the slope actually means and then how you would find it when you're doing linear regression. Start out with the Y. Couple things to think about. You would do this when a scatter plot data comes from some sort of simple random sample, uh, not a census. In the same way that you wouldn't do a confidence interval if you took a census uh, when you ask people one question, you wouldn't do a confidence interval uh, when you ask people two questions either, uh, if it was a census. You would only do it from a sample. Next thing is that when you're doing regression, the slope is the most important piece of information you look at because it talks about how X and Y are related. And uh, if your slope is zero, of course, that means that you have no relationship between X and Y. If you have a slope of something else besides zero, it means that one is somehow linked to the other and you can figure out how much they are linked and use that slope to make predictions. But the biggest uh, reason why you want to use the confidence interval, not just the straight up slope as given in the equation, is that you want to see how much variation there is in your estimate. You want to see how much things deviate from what you originally calculated. Uh, so that you can see how good your line really is. If you have this original set of data we had with the weight of a car and the miles per gallon, you have your regression line up here, and we said in a sentence that an increase of one pound, talking about our slope now, increase of one pound in car's weight is linked to an average decrease of 0 0.0035 miles per gallon and that's what the slope is referring to increase by one decrease by that now if we put this data in stat key we're going to end up with something like this I'm going to go ahead and pull that up just so you can see how we go through that uh, first thing you're going to do is under your confidence intervals at the bottom you have a confidence interval for slope we're going to click on that I'm going to edit the data and I have mine uh, ready to paste in, uh, but that's something you could type in, separated by commas or tabs. Uh, and so it's my weight and my miles per gallon. And you'll see it doesn't plot my points automatically, it only does it over here on the side. I can see that overall trend. But I'm going to change this from correlation to slope. So I'm going to switch that to slope because I want to look at uh, how the slope comes out. And after I generate a few thousand samples here, I'm going to go ahead and look at uh, my middle 95%. I'm getting a 95% confidence interval. I'm going to slip back here uh, into my screen where I can draw on what I came up with. Um, the middle 95% is going to uh, fall between these two values here, negative .0052 and negative 0.00054, so something very close to zero on this end, a um, little bit farther away on the left side. And if we remember, our 0 0.0035 is roughly halfway in between these values, so that makes rough sense. If the data is not perfectly uh, symmetrical, you can see it's kind of a skewed pattern here, um, which is why it's not necessarily going to be in the dead middle of these two. And we often won't uh, take the time to write that out in plus minus form. But figuring out how to interpret this in a sentence, we want to take uh, what we have up here and just uh, change it into the speak of a confidence interval. So instead of saying this is what the slope is, we're going to say the slope is between these two values. So we are 95% confident that, and we continue as we had, an increase of one pound in a car's weight is linked to an average decrease of, and this is where instead of just saying a number, we're going to give that 95% interval that we just found, 0 0.0005 to 0 0.0052 miles per gallon. You'll notice that I wrote this number first before this number because they're both negative and it's just a little bit more readable to say uh, a smaller number to a bigger number um, talking about an average decrease instead of an increase of a negative amount. So that's just a, kind of a personal preference to make it a little bit more readable since we're talking about a decrease. So one last time through that confidence interval. 
we're 95 percent confident that an average increase of one pound in the car's weight car's weight goes up one pound is linked to an average decrease of 0 0.0005 to 0 0.0052 miles per gallon there's going to be a drop in miles per gallon somewhere between these values we predict uh, based on a one pound increase of a car's weight.